Hi, welcome back to Cybersecure. My name is Sam, and today I'm going to be talking to you about QR codes, what they are, how they can be malicious, how hackers are using them to steal your information, how to protect yourself, as well as a quick demo on how these malicious QR codes are set up. So what is a QR code? Well, a QR code is short for Quick Response Codes. Uh, they were developed back in 1994 originally in Japan, and today they're a lot more mainstream. It's essentially a barcode that you will scan with your smartphone and in today's technology most smartphones have uh, the QR code scanner natively built in. Scan your, scan your QR code and then it will redirect you typically to a website or as we've seen during the pandemic we've seen uh, menus go on QR codes so when you go to a restaurant you'll scan the QR code at the, at the table as well as flyers, brochures, any kind of online document that a company can set up they can put on a QR code uh, for the user's convenience. However, with that convenience, definitely comes security risks as everything in security, if something is very convenient, it's typically less secure. So there's been numerous cases on uh, malicious QR codes. The FBI in an article uh, stated that the uh, cyber criminals uh, can use altered QR codes, so malicious QR codes, uh, to steal personal and financial information from unsuspecting customers. Essentially, hackers are setting up uh, malicious QR codes and then they are redirecting people using those QR codes to phishing sites, so when their user will scan the QR code, it will redirect them to a phishing site and then they will be prompted for uh, login information, personal information, credit card information, and the unsuspecting user will enter that information and they will send their plain text to the hacker. Short story, uh, a couple months ago, my wife and I were at the aquarium and before we even go get our tickets to go into the facility, there is a map on the wall with the QR codes uh, underneath it and it was a meant to be a QR code for the map for the aquarium so you can follow along and, and know where you are through your smartphone. So she runs up, scans it, and she's happy. She's got the, she's got the QR code and I'm, I laugh at her and I'm like, how did you know that was for the map? And then she you know, said, well, they wouldn't put it there if it wasn't for the map. And I said, well, how did you know they put it there? And we have a bit of a back and forth and she tells me I'm being paranoid and laughs at me. But it dawned on me how easy that would have been to set something up if I was a hacker, get a sticker, put it over the over the sticker that is in place for the aquarium that will prompt the user to create an account before being accessed to the map. So I'd set up a fake landing page uh, that looked like the aquarium and I would ask them to set up an account. So I would do maybe a credential harvesting kind of attack in hopes that they would be using the same login credentials and same username and password that they would for, for their social media accounts or bank accounts because it's very common for people to be using uh, the same username and password on across all accounts. Also, what I could do as well if I was a hacker in that situation um, is set up, as long, along with the map, I could have a QR code to buy tickets now and skip the line. So someone would go up, uh, scan the QR code, and they'll be redirected to a fake ticket page and they'll be asked for their, for their information, their financial information. And then I would redirect them to the actual ticket page and they would think maybe there's a blip in the system, redo the information, and then they would go on their way, getting their tickets, but little do they know. They've actually sent their credit card information uh, to a malicious user. So I briefly explained that to her. She rolled her eyes, told me I was paranoid. I still laugh at it today that if I see a QR code in public, I'm like, hey, quick, go scan it. Um, but I think it's important for people to be aware how easy it is to, to trick people using QR codes and how easy it is to set up a fake login page um, using a QR code. So to show you how easy it is to set up a malicious QR code, I'm just gonna show you a quick demo. Before I do, uh, this is just for information purposes. If you do this, do it at your own discretion. Don't use this in a, in a malicious setting. So I'm gonna be using Kali Linux as uh, the operating system for this demonstration. And there's a bunch of different tools built into Kali with a, that help with a bunch of different uh, hacking scenarios. And so this one um, is gonna be setting up a malicious URL as well as uh, generate a QR code for that URL. So to start, and you can use a program called uh, zfisher. To run it, I'm just gonna run this command and it's just gonna pull up the program here. <clears throat> so as you can see, there's 35 different uh, sites we can choose from uh, to set up a fake landing page. That's exactly what this is doing. We're gonna be creating a fake URL using this. Um, so for this demonstration, I'm just gonna use uh, Facebook, number one. And then here, it's just asking for uh, what kind of login page. I'm just gonna do the, the basic traditional one. And then I'm gonna use cloud for those. So you can also master the URL if you want. Uh, I'm not gonna do it just for this demonstration. I'm just gonna leave it as the default that they set. But you can, for example, for Facebook, you can now change it to um, www.facebrook, you know, with a uh, B-R-O-K instead of B-O-O-K. So to make, to make it look more believable if the user looks at the URL. Uh, but in this case, I'm just gonna use the uh, I'm just gonna use the top basic one. And then as we got the URL generated, um, we are now gonna go over to Terminal. And also we're gonna to go to uh, the social engineering tools and then we're gonna use the um, social engineering toolkit. And this is again, just a built-in program within Kali. 
And then so it's gonna be a social engineering attack. And from here, we're gonna use number eight, which is which is gonna be a QR code generator. And then here's where we're gonna enter that URL that we just made in Zfisher. And then as you can tell, it's been generated and this is where it's saved. So then we're gonna open the terminal. And then as you can see from here, as it's been saved here, we're now gonna to move to this directory. Roll through. And then we're gonna open that uh, QR code here. And so as you can see, the QR code is now open. Um, I'm gonna switch camera so I can use my phone to scan it and then to show you. So now you can see the QR code is generated. I'm just gonna scan it. And then from there, it's gonna redirect me to a fake login page for Facebook. And then from here, I'm just gonna enter my, uh, obviously not my real credentials, but just a fake one. So I just did fake.test as my username. And then it's gonna give me a login, redirect me to a mobile number. Search for that one. And as you see, it says, please identify your account using an email or phone number. So what it did was it redirected me to a real page. As you can see by the URL at the bottom, you can see that it says facebook.com. So that's the real actual site from here. I would just enter my mobile number and then it would redirect me to the actual page. So now after entering the uh, credentials, it redirected me to, the, to an actual login page where I would type in my uh, email address or phone number. And then that was the actual um, login page. So then Facebook would redirect me that way. Um, but on the back end, after I entered the first set of credentials, we got the IP address as well as the account username I typed in and the password, um, which I typed in and I saved them uh, in a .dat file file uh, within, within Cali. You can set this up as a QR code, stick it somewhere, and then all of a sudden, you know, on the back end, this is just collecting username and password um, constantly. So as you can see, uh, that really wasn't that challenging. Uh, it was pretty straightforward on uh, getting that fake URL set up as well as using the tools already in Kali to, uh, to generate a QR code. Um, and then obviously just have, you know, all you have to do is print that out or attach that to an email um, or send that to someone to scan and then you can get them to obviously do a, do a variety of different, different things. So best piece of advice is don't trust QR codes uh, just because they're there for your convenience doesn't mean they're there for your safety. Um, so don't trust them if you see them. Uh, definitely wait until you're in the facility um, and not do what my wife did where she just ran up and, and scanned it. Wait till you're in the actual control facility, at least that way they have a little bit more control on, on in the environment. If you do scan a QR codes, best not to enter any sensitive information. You know, if it redirects you to a login page, uh, especially if you weren't expecting it to, definitely do not log in. Don't just assume that it knows best and it's, it's redirecting you there for a reason. Check out the URL, you know, open that up and, and inspect that for spelling mistakes. When you're scanning a QR code and, and it looks like there's a, it's been stuck down somewhere, uh, make sure that there's not a QR code underneath it. But definitely if something seems suspicious about the QR code, uh, best, not to, best not to scan it, best not to trust it. If you know the URL, if you know the website, if you know uh, where it is they're wanting you to go roughly, you're better off just, just typing that URL in yourself. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Let me know in the comments below if you have any stories about QR codes or uh, your opinions on, on the subject. So I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, my name is Sam and this is Cyber Insecure.